South Africa is a country rich in culture and heritage, blessed with several cultures and over 10 official languages. And as we celebrate Heritage Day, we talk about the economics of promoting one's heritage. Being Tourism Month, this is also a time when South Africans and those from further afield are being encouraged to explore the rich heritage of the country in their travels. Well, to discuss the notion of cultural tourism, its impact and its potential to boost the tourism sector's fortunes, I'm joined by advocate uh, Sonwa Bile Manyocha. He's a heritage expert and founding CEO of the National Heritage Council of South Africa. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. So how would you define cultural tourism and why is this practice important in terms of preserving heritage and promoting local cultures? Thank you very much and a happy um, Heritage Day. Um, I think countries all over the world, um, they, they do, uh, you know, uh, celebrate the heritage. But at the same time, uh, if we benchmark, for instance, uh, uh, when it comes to economics uh, of, of heritage, a country like, take a country like, um, you know, France, which has actually won a prize of, uh, you know, being the most visited uh, you know, country in the world. Uh, what they've done uh, is to, one, preserve the, the historic sites, the, the heritage, and investing on artistic festivals, and then and creating uh, them, creating jobs, uh, more, thousands of jobs, and and and, and putting with a contribution of more than 15 billion into the economy. So what is uh, a, a, a lacking, I think, in South Africa, you know, one for policymakers uh, to be aware of the value of culture and heritage, not only to be celebrated on the 24th of September, but uh, recognizing that cultural industries do play an important role in how to leverage on them. Um, heritage then becomes a, an input factor, uh, whereas uh, a tour tourism becomes an output. So, so you, have, you have to preserve, you have to promote, sorry, you have to protect you know, a, a heritage, our historic sites. Uh, uh, so that when they are uh, protected, they automatically sell themselves or market themselves. Um, so the, the challenge in our country is that uh, there's been less uh, protection uh, when it comes to uh, a, a, a cultural heritage. You know that there's cultural heritage and uh, as well as natural heritage. The focus tends to be more on natural heritage. Mm. That has got something to do with our history. But also, I think we, the, 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 the government also has not uh, you know, uh, focused on that, most especially at municipality levels, yes. to, to, to ensure that heritage sites, you know, uh, most especially you know, a cultural heritage, I'm talking about historic buildings, are protected you know, so, uh, and, and so that they can be able then to be you know, uh, packaged. Remember also, uh, you know, heritage is a public good. You know, we have got to get this element of education, you know, itself. So you have got to balance between the two, which is then protection, but also on, uh, you know, of uh, once it's protected, then you can be able to, 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 to uh, you know, a market, you know, it, of course, true, various tourism boards, you know, you, you, you market it. Yes. The Adv second part. Ad advocates, I wanted to ask you um, about the how, in terms of how do we ensure that we preserve these heritage sites and promote culture such that you know we continue to invest and it becomes a situation where it markets itself people go there and through word of mouth they talk about places just as we would about sites in france and so on the how how should that be done at a municipal level national government level even involving the likes of the private sector and maybe even ngos yeah, the fact the, the first thing that is very much important is to is to is to is to educate policymakers about uh, about the value of of, of of heritage, so that they, they, there's investment when it comes to we, we have seen you know uh, in in municipalities more, when there's less money uh, you know uh, left it, it must be you know thrown on heritage because they don't actually see the value, so you have got to deal with the ignorance of policymakers. That that's the first thing. But then the second thing, which is also very much important, is 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 is, 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 is protection of 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 of, the, of, the, of these heritage sites through various there are various legislations that are there. For instance, South African Heritage 
you know, uh, you know, uh, resource, you know, um, uh, add, you know, the structures like SARA, which are actually there, but also in provinces, the structures like provincial energy resource, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, agencies. But these agencies tend to be under-resourced as well. That's another challenge because so you have got to deal with, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, ensuring that policymakers do understand the bill of heritage, so that there's more budget actually, uh, you know, thrown also to heritage. But the second one is the policy paradigm. If you look at, for instance, you know, the, the, the sites like the Evil Palance, if you look at, for instance, Robin Island, and compare it to table, a site like Table Mountain, Table Mountain is much more visited than, than, than Robin Island. You know why? Because of the ownership model, there's involvement of private sector in the, in the, in the, in the running of, 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 of the operations of, 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 of uh, you know, a, a site like, uh, you know, a, a, a Table Mountain. So you've got to concession some of this, uh, the, these sites, you know, so that you, the government is, not, the government is not obsessed by owning of, of heritage sites so that we see what is happening in Robben Island, which is quite sad when it comes to the issue of, uh, you know, a, 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 you know, a, 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 a running of the site on also visitation of the, but also to ensure that, as, you know, those, those uh, boats, that, that could be outsourced. But also the state, you know, runs a, what is called through a concession to ensure that there's conditionalities. When private sector is involved, but at the same time, you know, the, 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 uh, uh, through, uh, you know, an, an, you know, agreement or service level, level, uh, service level agreements, there's protection of, of national heritage. Like, like it's happening. For instance, my PhD, my PhD uh, thesis focuses really on this issue of models. I've done, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, a comparison actually and then and, and juxtaposing uh, uh, and benchmarking, of course, of, of Robin Island and as well as, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, in my study and as well as a, 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 a table mountain. So that, that's the second part, which is very much important. The world over, you know, you, you have a situation where you know, the, 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 the uh, uh, private sector plays a role uh, in, for, for these sites to become not just abstract spaces, but strategic development nodes. The third part of it, which is very much important, you know, is, 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 to, is to ensure that these sites are all identified all over the, the, and protected all over the uh, South Africa. Look at Nelson Mandela, and, you know, an icon, you know, uh, 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 he brought our democracy, uh, respected all over the world, but his, his resting place, you know, uh, is an abstract space, you know. And then, then if you benchmark that, and that's Mandela as, uh, you know, a, 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 a parallel uh, site, like, uh, you know, Marcus Garvey and, 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 and Mao Zedong and so forth, those sites are quite vib vibrant. And, and, and yet uh, you, you have a situation where, uh, former President Nelson Mandela, you know, lies in Kono, like, yeah. you know, in the same way that, you know, is an abstract space. Advocate. So therefore, yeah. Yeah, Advocate, thank you so much. Uh, you're giving us a lot of detail. Very interesting what you're talking about when you talk about the funding model in order for these things to be, you know, viable and sustainable. Because, as you say, national government, local municipalities, they don't have enough funds they have to vie for many competing issues you know like delivering water and other services as well as looking after heritage sites so a very interesting idea there we've run out of time but thank you very much uh, for some of your insights there that was advocate Sonwa Bile uh, Manyosha